Brake all the way down, gas all the way down, launch control active. Oh. My name is Omar and this is the 2022 Audi S3. I love me some compact luxury cars with a lot of power. And hey, if you do as well, hit that like button. And if this is one of my first videos that you're watching, consider subscribing. I drop new car reviews every week where I go over the cool and interesting features about a particular car. And then I give you a nice pricing breakdown so you can figure out which trim level is the best for you to buy. So we've been making do with the outgoing A3 S3 for quite a while here in the United States, but we finally have an update to the entry level Audi sedan and it's really well done. Not only does it look better than the outgoing model, it's more spacious and it has an interior that you can be proud of as an Audi owner. And most importantly, it has more power. The regular A3 makes 201 horsepower from a four cylinder turbo engine. Not that crazy, right? Well, the new S3 now makes 306 horsepower, 18 more than the outgoing one. It's got a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission with lightning quick shifts and it'll do zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. This thing is so much fun to drive. And I don't know if you can hear the exhaust, nice pops and bangs. This thing sounds really nice when you're really driving it like it's meant to be driven. Now I know my excitement over the S3 might be a little bit unwarranted because there is an RS3 which makes 401 horsepower. That will do zero to 60 in just 3.9 seconds. And I hope I get to drive that very soon. But for now, the S3 will have to do. As a daily driver, this thing is pretty comfortable. It does feel way more refined than the outgoing S3. In the comfort drive mode, it's just a normal compact luxury sedan going about its business. But in dynamic mode, this thing comes alive. I feel like it just wants you to push it harder and harder. The steering feel does get a little bit tighter in dynamic mode, but not too tight where you feel like you would have to go to the gym just to drive it. That said, the new S3 does face some tough competition. Mercedes AMG has the CLA 35 and BMW well, BMW has that really odd looking M235i Grand Coupe. So how does the new S3 stack up against those two? Let's find out. Let me give you a quick tour of the new S3 and then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy it over the competition. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's do this. All right, as always, before I break down the pricing details, show you the engine specs and give you a closer look at the exterior and interior, let's take a look at some of the cool and interesting things that you should know about the new S3. So I already launched the S3 in the beginning of this video, but we gotta do it one more time. To launch control the S3, you want to be in dynamic mode, obviously. And then you wanna put the ESC into sport mode by hitting this button right over here. And then you put your foot on the brake, accelerator all the way down, you'll see launch control program activated, you release. Oh man pretty satisfying indeed next up the audi a3 and the s3 are all new for the 2022 model year well at least here in the united states we've been making it work with the last generation since 2015 i think but yeah the 2022 model year gets a brand new updated interior and we'll see a lot of it throughout this review but there are three unique elements that I wanted to point out that I found a bit interesting. The first thing that you'll notice is that it's really driver focused. Take a look at these vents. They're really focused on the driver. They're placed on each side of the steering wheel and have a floating look to them. And honestly, it looks kind of cool this way with the dash broken up instead of one single straight dash that's connected to the passenger side. The second thing that I want to point out is that Audi has deleted the volume knob in favor of a touch sensitive dial right here. To increase or decrease the volume, you just slide your finger around it in a circular motion. Not sure how I feel about this. The third thing that I want to highlight is this toggle switch gear selector, like the ones you see on newer Porsche models. Not sure how I feel about this either, but let me know what you think about it in the comments. Do you prefer this or an actual shifter? I'm guessing a lot of you would prefer an actual shifter, but let me know. All right, now let's quickly run through some other cool and interesting things in a quick rapid fire session. Since this is a more performance oriented version of the A3, you have a lap timer here so you can test your skills out on the track. You can get really cool matrix LED headlamps if you go for the prestige trim. I'm not that cool, I'm driving the premium plus, but every A3 and S3 gets LED headlamps that are pretty stylish. All A3 and S3 models get LED taillights and they do a really nice welcome animation when you hit unlock and they also do a cool animation when you lock it. Since the touchscreen display for the MMI infotainment system is very prone to fingerprints, you get an Audi cloth to clean the screen and you can clean it by hitting the screen cleaning button right here. 
that will lock the screen and then you can just wipe away with your nice little Audi cloth. Now I'm pretty sure that Audis have had this for a while, but I just noticed this now, so I'm gonna point it out. If you go into the infotainment, you can select energy consumers, and that will tell you what part of your Audi is consuming the most energy. So right now I have the left seat heating, the right seat heating, and the air conditioning running. All right, let's get into the pricing details of the 2022 A3, which starts at $33,900. When you start going for the S3, that starts at $44,900. As tested here, this is the Premium Plus. This is loaded at $55,890. Now, of course, that sounds like a lot of money, but all A3 and S3 base premium trims come with a bunch of standard features that are pretty impressive. You start off with this 10.1 inch touchscreen display for the MMI infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto along with handwriting functionality. They all get a giant 10.25 inch digital instrument display, but the one I'm showing you here is the upgraded 12.3 inch virtual cockpit display. They all get leather trim seats. There's no cloth in the lower trims with eight way power front seats with four way power lumbar support. Not to mention the front seats are heated as standard you don't get ventilated seats, not even as an option. All A3 and S3 trims get three zone climate control, which is pretty awesome, along with a not so giant panoramic sunroof. I wouldn't consider this a panoramic sunroof. Maybe, maybe not. And then you get lane departure warning as standard. You also get LED headlamps. Like I said before, the cool matrix LED headlamps are only available on the prestige trim, but all A3 and S3 models get LED taillights. Now, if you want some more impressive driver assist tech, you will have to start at the premium plus, which adds on adaptive cruise control, active lane assist, an alarm system with motion sensors, side assist with rear cross traffic alert, and that also throws on a wireless charger, which is right here, which I think should be standard. And if money is of no concern to you and you want to go all out, go for the Prestige because that's where you get the cooler Matrix LED headlamps. You also get this amazing Bang & Olufsen sound system. Sounds really good. You get the virtual cockpit display and you get a heads up display as well as navigation. Now get this, the Premium Plus S3 that I'm testing here throws on some packages that almost makes this a Prestige trim. The only thing I'm really missing is the Matrix LED headlamps. I've got the tech package, which costs $2,250, and that gives me Audi Connect Plus, the MMI infotainment with navigation, it adds on the virtual cockpit display, the Bang & Olufsen sound system, and traffic sign recognition. All these things are available on the Prestige trim. I also have the fine Napa leather package for $1,250, which gives me these fine Napa leather seats with this cool diamond stitching pattern on them. And it also gives me carbon Atlas trim. Again, this is standard on the Prestige. Other than that, I have the S Sport package for $1,100, and that gives me these red brake calipers, which look really nice, and a sport suspension with damper control. And then last but not least, I have the black optic package for $1,950. And like on other Audi models, this gives me upgraded wheels. These are 19 inch wheels. They look pretty awesome. They're wrapped in summer tires. And it also gives me blacked out exhaust tips, blacked out mirror housings, along with a blacked out roof and a bunch of other blacked out trim on the outside. As for horsepower and torque, the S3 is powered by a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine pumping out 306 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, and that's made it to a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. Now you can go for the Audi A3, which makes 201 horsepower and will do zero to 60 in 6.3 seconds if you don't care about speed, or if you want to go even faster, you can go for the RS3, which makes 401 horsepower and will do zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds. Now as for the S3 right here, this will do zero to 60 in four and a half seconds, which is pretty respectable, and you have a top speed of 100 and 55 miles an hour. If you wanna go faster, of course, go for the RS3. Now, when it comes to the exterior design of the new A3 and S3, Audi really went with a more aggressive look. I'm gonna use all the keywords here. It looks bolder, it looks sharper, wider, with a more aggressive stance. And that's because Audi says that the overall A3 and S3 RS3 lineup was designed with a more RS inspired feel. So this time, not only does the RS3 look tough, so do the A3 and the S3. The front end looks pretty sharp, and personally, I think it has little to do with the grille and more to do with the design of the headlamps, even though these aren't the upgraded Matrix LED headlamps. Now, compared to the outgoing S3, the new S3 is 0.8 inches wider and 1.5 inches longer. Go around the back, and like I mentioned before, you get standard LED taillights. The only thing that I'll mention here is that Audi didn't do those taillight designs where they span the whole width of the rear, I think that would have been a cool thing for the A3 S3 to get. But the S3 will give you quad exhaust that look really, really cool. Now, how does it look compared to the rest of the segment? Well, you've got the new BMW 2 Series, which no. Then you have the Mercedes-Benz CLS and even the new Acura Integra, which everybody's in love with. They cannot wait for the new Integra. 
I hope you can sense the sarcasm in my voice. Let me know in the comments below which one you think looks better, the CLS, the A3, S3, or the Acura Integra. It's super windy, so let's quickly take a look at the cargo capacity. You have 10.9 cubic feet. Sorry for my mess back there. 11 cubic feet, 10.9, same thing. Not bad, not great. As for the inside, I'm not going to dive too deep into it since we've seen a lot of it throughout this review, but I do want to know what you think of it. It's definitely a much cleaner and minimalistic design, and I kind of like it. But yeah, that said, what I do want to know from you guys is if whether or not you're a fan of single screen infotainment systems, like the one seen here on the S3, or do you prefer dual screen MMI infotainment systems like you have on the A6 and above? Let me know in the comments. Now, when it comes to rear legroom, you're working with 37.4 inches of legroom. I'm about six foot tall. That is my seating position. As you can see, not that great, but not that bad either. Now, before I give you my opinion on how the Audi S3 stacks up against the competition, let me point out a few random things I'd love to show all of you. You have four cup holders, two in the front, and then you have two in the back for the rear passengers. And here are what the keys look like to the Audi S3. You have a little S logo right back there. Pretty dope. Door open and close sound from the outside. And from the inside. Oh, that wind from the inside. Charging game wise, you're working with a wireless charger right there and you have two USB-C ports right there. Rear passengers also get two USB-C ports, so that's nice. No USB-A ports, USB-C is the way to be. It is now time to hear the indicator and horn sound here on the 2022 Audi S3 indicator first. Pretty standard Audi indicator now for the horn sound. Oh yeah, pretty solid indeed. And now that I've given you a tour of the new S3, let me give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy this over the CLA35 and the M235i. It sounds so good. All right, I haven't driven the new BMW M235i Grand Coupe, but I'm going to take it off this list because I think it just looks so bad. I know people have been saying that you have to see it in person, and to be honest, I don't want to see it in person. I'm sure it drives great, but yeah. On paper, the M235i is pretty similar to the S3. It makes 301 horsepower, and that will do 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds. Now, the AMG CLA35, that makes 302 horsepower and will do 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds, so it's slower than the S3 and definitely more pricey. The S3 starts right under $45,000, while the AMG CLA35 starts right under $48,000, and that not-so-good-looking BMW sits right in the middle, at $45,500. Between the S3 and the CLA35, it's really a tough decision for me to make because both are outstanding compact luxury sedans with a lot of power. I think it really just comes down to brand loyalty. The CLA35 definitely has a more stylish and sleeker looking interior, but Audi has done some really nice updates to the new S3 to keep it competitive. Let me know in the comments which one you would go for, the S3, the CLA35, or that not so good looking BMW. And if I really had to be picky, there are only two things that I really don't like about the new A3 and S3. And I can get over this toggle shifter, but I feel like the steering wheel is a little too big for this car, and I don't like that touch-sensitive volume knob thing going on. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Peace. Oh, it shifts so, so quick. Popping bangs. Oh, yeah.